the MP5, or more accurately, the Zenith ZF5. One of the most iconic subguns of all time. Super accurate. Welcome back to Sawtooth Tactical, your source for Second Amendment news, gun reviews, and more. Today, we are reviewing one of my favorite firearms ever, the MP5. Or more accurately, the Zenith ZF5. This is an American-made MP5 clone and a very high-quality one at that. So before we get started, make sure you're subscribed and let's go over the MP5. I have wanted an MP5 or an MP5 clone for a very long time, so this is very exciting for me today. Oh, that's way too good. So the Zenith ZF5. So Zenith has been making MP5 clones in Turkey on original HK tooling for a long time. They're one of the most accurate clones on the market. And now they're making them 100% in the United States of America. This is an American made MP5 clone. And this one's an actual SBR. This thing is sweet. I have wanted an MP5 ever since I first got into guns. To me, an MP5 is, it's kind of like an AK or a 1911, there's just something classic about the way an MP5 looks. It's got an amazing history to it. It is probably the most iconic submachine gun of all time, though this one is semi-automatic, so technically a pistol caliber carbine, but it is different than like my AR9 PCC in that the MP5 runs on a roller delayed blowback operating system rather than simple direct blowback. And for that reason, you get a gun with a very, very light recoil impulse, a gun that suppresses very well. Um, it has almost no recoil. It can be very quiet with a suppressor and subsonic ammunition and has very little gas blowback in your face. It was designed a long time ago, and to this day, it is still probably the most popular sub gun in the world. And there's good reason for that. For one, just look at it. This is a very, very classic form factor. It's just a beautiful looking gun. It's something that has been in all kinds of popular culture, movies, video games. People that aren't even into guns know what an MP5 is. The Zenith ZF5, now I am not an MP5 expert by any means. In fact, this is the first MP5 I've really got to spend any significant time with. But from people that know, they say that this Zenith clone is as good a clone as you can get to the original HK. The difference is this. If you want to buy an HK SP5, which is the semi-automatic version of the actual MP5, you're going to pay more than double what this costs. You can find these for around $1,600 right now, which for a clone of this quality, I think is a really good price. It comes with all of the features that you want that make it, you know, clone correct, basically. It's got your rotating aperture sight here, which gives you, you know, four different size holes for depending what, how far away your engagements are. It has the three lug adapter for suppressors that work on three lug, but it is also threaded for direct thread suppressors or any other kind of mounts that you want to put on there. It's got your sling attachments here 
here and back on the stock here. So you can run a single point, two point, or even a three point sling on this. The stock, you know, comes in and out very easily. There's a little button down here. It doesn't come with this stock. I believe that this was put on it when the gun was SBR'd. This is not my firearm. And I wanna thank my good friend Dylan for loaning me this gun for the review. I really appreciate it, man. The biggest thing about this, well, not the biggest thing, but the thing most people know about the MP5, well, is the HK slap. <laughs> it is just a satisfying sound, a satisfying feeling, and you just have to slap an MP5. But the thing about an MP5, it does have, it's not quite as modern as far as ergonomics, controls, trigger, all of that stuff is an AR. So we're gonna talk about that too. MP5 magazines are really nice. They're double stack, double feed, unlike a Glock mag or something. So they load just like your AR or your AK mags, which sure makes things nice and easy. So I'm not gonna go over the AR controls and ergonomics today because I'm actually gonna do a video next week comparing the MP5 with my EPC9 or just a modern AR pistol caliber carbine. But I do wanna go over the manual of arms with this because it is unique to this platform. So these MP5 clones do have a mag release button up here, kind of like your AR does, but it's not something you can reach easily with your hand on the grip. This one actually also comes with the Magpul selector, which is nice because the original MP5 selector is not very easy to get to, but even this one, I can get to it just fine with my hand on the grip, but if you actually have the thing shouldered, it is not easy. Um, so in that way, different from an AR. Another big difference is the actual trigger itself. The trigger is heavy. So you pull, 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 there's your brake. And from what I've been told is this is about the best MP5 trigger you can get. Reset, brake. So it is something to get used to. It's definitely not gonna feel like you're Geisley, that's for sure. Now, when it comes to reloads, there is no, so besides the uh, button here, you do have a paddle mag release, just like on an AK, but you can't stick your magazine on a closed bolt. So if your reloads, you drop your mag, pull back the charging handle and lock it in place, insert your new mag, and then slap it home. And so, Reloads are not quite as fast as they are with something like an AR. Um, you know, you just, your controls and ergonomics are a little bit dated, but who cares? The thing is classic and it's a ton of fun to shoot. Let's look at it up close. One of the very satisfying things about an MP5 or an MP5 clone is the HK slap. So here we have the ZF5 up close, and you can see that the fit and finish on this thing is just fantastic. All the welds look really good. You can see in there, and it just has that classic HK MP5 look. This one has the original handguard on it, though if you want, it's very easy to swap that out for something more modern with M-Lock or Picatinny if you wanna be able to you know, mount lights, lasers, any other kinds of attachments like that. Standard HK MP5 magazines, and these are double stack, double feed, which is really nice for loading them. They load just like an AR or an AK magazine, which is a lot nicer than loading like a Glock magazine, which is double stack, single feed. Your selector is ambidextrous, which is nice. And you can see that it has safe, semi, and there should be a third position there. But 
because of the laws that we have in this country, the ATF won't allow us to have fun, <laughs> or at least not as much fun as we should be able to have. You know, that third position is supposed to be a full semiotic, semi-automatic, if you know what I mean. So again here, we do see the aperture sight. This is the correct sight for an MP5. It's got four different size holes, which line up perfectly with your hooded front sight. And this thing is extremely accurate. Um, I was able to shoot it very well, and it was my first time ever shooting this gun. And it just has such little recoil. It's extremely accurate, more accurate than I could ever be. And it's just a pleasure to shoot. I can only imagine what it would be like with the suppressor on it. And uh, might have to get one and borrow it again sometime. There is just a form factor to this. It just looks good. Oh, and it's just fun to shoot. So I had a lot of fun shooting this MP5 out at the range, and it made me want to get one myself. Now, I did shoot it back to back with my own home built AR9, and just to kind of compare the two, and I will have a video coming out comparing the classic MP5 versus the more modern AR9 and which one I think I like better, which one might be better for you. That video will be coming next week. So make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned. But for anybody that's a gun collector, anybody that appreciates history, gun design, the MP5 is something that's almost a must for any serious gun enthusiast collection. And I'm sure that I will be getting one at some point in the future myself. These are just really, really cool guns. They shoot really smooth, really soft. It would actually be a great gun for a new shooter to take out uh, just because of how easy it is to shoot it accurately and to shoot it well. And if it was suppressed, all the more better, then it would be quiet and soft shooting and accurate. It's hard to beat that. Let's uh, check out this trigger real fast. Pull out my trigger gauge here and uh, see what this pulls at. Seven point four pounds. Let's try it one more time. Eight point four pounds. So it's not a light trigger, and that is something to get used to. But the fact that everything else about it works so well, the roller delayed blowback really makes for a smooth shooting gun. I didn't see find that trigger bothering me really by any means because <laughs> I just wanted to shoot it fast and I was able to. And with all the points of contact, you're able to keep it on target very well, even with a trigger that isn't fantastic. And that is nothing to do with the Zenith clone. That just has to do with MP5s in general. The design of an MP5 trigger pack is just not something that's going to be as light and crisp as something like an AR or a 1911 type of trigger. It just is what it is. In fact, from what I've been able to gather, the Zenith trigger is maybe the best MP5 trigger on the market. It's what my research has told me. So this, if you are looking to get into an MP5, I think that this is a great option. Now, you could definitely go with the HK and spend three, four thousand dollars, or you can go with the Zenith, get something that's made in the USA, costs half as much, and from what I can tell, it is plenty good. Like I said, fit and finish are fantastic on this thing. It's got a really nice deep black finish. All the welds look great. The thing ran 100% reliably for me. 
had zero issues and it was super accurate, fast, and very, very fun to shoot. Unfortunately, with the pistol brace rule coming up, you can't really get one of these and put a brace on it anymore. If you're gonna do something like this and you wanna be able to shoulder it, you are going to have to SBR it. Unfortunately, that's just where we are right now. This pistol brace rule hopefully will get eventually struck down by the courts and we can go back to business as usual where we were able to put braces on things and SBR them if we wanted to, not because we had to. I had to just put that in there. You guys know how I feel about the pistol brace rule. It drives me crazy. <laughs> Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, if you like the MP5, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to Sawtooth Tactical. Hit that notification bell. Leave me a comment. Anything that you want to tell me about MP5s, I would love to hear about it. If you have one, if you have one of the clones, let me know how good yours is. And tell me if you think this gun is as cool as I think it is because I absolutely love this thing. From Sawtooth Tactical, stay strapped or get clapped.